beautiful Gemini friends and welcome to your April 2020 horoscope and this month I feel like is interesting gems. I know many of you have been having quite the bit of a time going on and this month I do think is a helpful month for you. I think it's a month where you can make some progress to push some things forward and I also think because we've got energies moving a little bit out of bounds, what it helps you to do Gemini's is to find new and innovative solutions to things that are in your current space and reality. So I think we're gonna see that happen quite a bit this month. So let's jump in and talk about this. Now, first and foremost, we've got Mars and Aquarius all month long. So Mars is gonna to continue to work and rock up here with Saturn in your ninth house. Now, Mars himself is bringing action and energy and movement. So this is things about training, expansion, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, any of those things fall in there. But the other thing that I think of is with having Saturn up here in this ninth house for you as well, Saturn is going to fundamentally reset the way that you think, the way that you believe about things, the, the forces and principles and faith and ideas that guide your life forward. And some of it will mean because it's in Aquarian energy, you're going to have to take a pretty serious motion to take something forward and to expand it and to make it probably very public as well, not only because it's above this horizon line, but it's in Aquarian energy, which is social. So it's welcome though. It's welcome. It's been waiting to be seen here. You maybe have to collaborate a fair amount or our group together with people so that you can share your information. But Gemini with Mars up there, even with Saturn, this is a solid month forward push of action that you can take on projects, on education, or things like that that will help you to expand out, okay? Now on the third, we're gonna see Venus, who's up here in Taurus, traveling through this 12th house, move down and into your sign, Gemini. So Venus coming into your sign, first of all, when Venus comes into your first house, when Venus comes into your sign, she brings a ton of beauty. So you may be feeling a little cute. You know, you might be feeling attractive. You're wanting to update your image. You're wanting to take new photos for something. You're wanting to um, update the projects or the, the product pictures that you have or something like that. As well, Venus coming into your first house makes you very magnetic, right? So it makes it so that you're easier to be received by other people and people are magnetizing to you. So if you do work, you do put out information or you're just being social, this is a nice attractive kind of energy coming into your space. Now, Venus is going to do this dance, though, this month for the entire month where she moves into a space that's called out of bounds, okay? So when Venus is in an out of bounds placement, what it means is we go out of bounds because not only is Venus bringing a magnetism here, but she's bringing money. She's bringing relationships. She's trying to bring a harmony and a balance to you as well. But you may have to go out of bounds to see how to do that. You might have to use, leave your normal circle your normal way of doing things, your normal place of doing things, and move someplace that is a little bit outside of your comfort zone or maybe someplace that's even a little bit new in order to get that done. It's just not going to be your traditional same old, same old. So use the magnetism of her out-of-bound state to help you to be able to do that, okay? Now, on the fourth, we're going to see that we have Jupiter and Pluto coming together for one of the three conjunctions that they're going to take together this year. Now, at this particular conjunction that they're going to do, nobody's in retrograde. Both of these planets are out of retrograde, so we've definitely got an inkling of forward motion. Being here in the eighth house, this is tied to joint resources right? Joint finances, a joint connection that you have to another entity or another person in some way, shape, or form. And by getting into it, it's a very intimate energy. But by having Jupiter and Pluto come together in this conjunction here, first of all, it's the first time it's happened for you in 13 years. So think back 13 years ago, what was happening in this area of your life for you? What was happening um, where you had something very significant come up, but you were really going after it. You were really having to step into it and it was changing the course of your future moving forward. Now this transiting south node that's here may seek 
to keep you in the same behavior patterns that you've been in before, but you have permission, you've got a full forward permission to move forward and away from these things and instead towards the North Node energies where you're nurturing something new. This is your supercharged moment of drive to go for it, right? This is a great moment for maybe even a spouse or a partner or someone who brings money or finance or value into your life, but you're not actually the one making it. This could also be um, information about a loan. Maybe there's a loan coming through. And I mean, we're in some interesting economic times, but it, loans are still happening. So that could be a loan or a sponsorship or a collaboration that comes to your table and you're driven and you go for it and it sets the stage for something really good moving forward. Now on the seventh, we're gonna have a full moon in the energy of Libra. So it's gonna light up down here in your fifth house space. The full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make some kind of shift in this area. The qualities of Libra tell us that we're looking for balance. What's in or out of balance, especially in relationships, right? Now the house is the fifth house. So this is children, youth, fun, joy, play, um, self-expression, maybe new projects, new businesses, new romance that could be happening here. So one of the things I think that this full moon is definitely bringing our attention to is in our relationships. Are we out of balance between that space of commitment and obligation and joy and fun and play, right? There's got to be joy in these areas. The other thing I keep thinking of is children in your lives or if you are a child consistently interacting with maybe your family members or something like that, the word and the position of child is very prominent here. And it may be showing you that this is gravely out of balance in some way. And because this is moon energy, I want to see what else is happening in the general. And I step over here to the Cancerian energy, the family energy in the second house. So you may be having some connection to finances with your family, balancing your relationship with your family um, in some way, shape or form, or women in your life could become something really prominent here. But there is a promising opportunity to maintain or regain the equilibrium or to adjust what needs to be adjusted in these relationships. And sometimes that includes just cutting them off, right? Now, at the same time, we're also going to have Mars, who's up here traveling in your ninth house, who's going to be in a square to Uranus over here in your 12th house. So somewhere in here, what we know is that when Mars and Uranus square, first of all, a square says we're going to be put under pressure and it's tension and it's pressure and we don't like what's happening, but it forces us to take an action because the square is the 911 of the aspects. It says move. We don't like being under tension here. So somewhere between your expansion and maybe something's been hidden, a project's been hidden. Maybe you're now being in a position where you've been trying to perfect it in some way and it's like, no, launch that thing out. Maybe it's something spiritual and you're bringing it to the table um, and, and something feels tense about it. But then Ultimately, you're put in a position to take the actions anyway to get it out. But you can certainly see this tension between something that's hidden. The 12th house is also the space that is traditionally ruled by Neptunian energy. So we can see some disease happening, slowing down your expansion or slowing down your... Um, your training in some way, shape, or form. But remember the squares there to help stimulate action so that you can get past it. Now on the 9th, Venus is going to still be here in your sign. It's going to be here for just some time. But on the 9th, Venus is actually going to enter into the pre-retrograde phase of her orbit, which means she's beginning to slow down to get ready to make that retrograde from May 13th until June 25th. But from April 9th until May 13th, Venus is starting to slow down and come into pre-retrograde phase. So what that means is a couple things. First of all, Gemini, you can be trying to put yourself out there and you're feeling like after the 9th, it's starting to happen more slowly. Or it's like, hold on, why does this feel like it's taking so long? Or I've got this thing out there, where's the money attached to it? And it could feel like it's taking a long time to get to you. Venus is slowing down. It'll certainly be much slower once she's in full retrograde, but you could start to see inklings of that now. 
as well. Um, this could be a place or a position where you're looking for harmony or balance in some kind of financing around something that you want to do, but you're starting to look back at it. You're starting to get some clarity about how to finance that, how to have a successful relationship with this particular energy in order to move something forward. During the retrograde, we're going to rethink and we're going to... Um, review relationships. We're going to review money. You're a Gemini. We are in a pandemic right now. We're going to review plenty of things that have to do with the respiratory systems as well. So we'll see it all start to come to light as we get into the ninth and things start to slow down. Now on the 11th, we see Mercury making this move from up here in the energy of Pisces, moving over here into the energy of Aries along with the sun. Now Mercury moving into Aries lights up your 11th house space. So this is chatty right? Like you're chatty. You're speaking forcefully. You're here to win. You're speaking up for what's important to you, but you're doing it in a social sphere. You're doing it in maybe a social media amongst the friends. You're motivated. The sun is here. So this is movement forward. You have space for productive conversation, productive decision-making, um, productive, um, production of videos or something like that, that you're doing, whatever that happens to be. This is a brilliant productive, I'm here to win kind of energy that's in your back sales all the way until the 27th of April. So please, please, please use it wisely. Not to mention Venus is still in your sign. You are ruled by Mercury. So you are being able to be seen and to be recognized and to be heard quite forcefully at this point in the month. If you will speak up and show us what you've got, if you will speak us and tell us what you need in the direction that you're trying to go. The 11th house is also connected to organizations. It's connected to causes and to your future. So just know everything about that Mercury movement in here. You're passionate about moving this deal forward. On the 19th, we see the sun moving on and moving into the energy of Taurus. And we come into Taurus season. So this is right before birthday time for you. The 12th house, the things that are hidden, right? There have been foundations in your life that you thought were very solid, Gemini. And since 2019, you have felt them be shaken out from underneath you, right? And you're finding new grounding. This is spiritually. You're probably spiritually awake, but now you're trying to translate that into a material plane. As the sun comes into this 12th house as well. It brings light, heat, life, motivation, energy, essence, movement to the table. So the things that have come unshaken become available from the 12th house for you to start making a plan with them, to start speaking them, to start sharing something that has been in hiding, to go back and say, hey, I need to meditate. I need to reground. I need to do some self-care over here, right? The 12th house is hidden. We have had a full moon in a relationship zone. If you've got a weird relationship going on or one that has just simply run its course, the sun moving into the energy of Taurus may be trying to show you here that it is genuinely time to transition that particular relationship out. But Taurus holds on. My goodness, I'm a Taurus. We hold on. So it may be something that is you've needed the help of the Uranian energy to allow the transition to come. Surrender to the upgrade, Gemini, okay? All right, on the 22nd, we're going to have a new moon happening here in the energy of Taurus, so lighting up the 12th house. This is where you plant those seeds of intention from the 12th house, from a hidden space, a creative space, a space where you're transitioning and allowing things to be done. You're assimilating and absorbing the information that you've been receiving, and you're preparing for a brand new start. You plant these seeds of intention to have a fresh start, a fresh perspective, a fresh reality around these areas, and this is able to come up. Now, I will tell you too, from the 19th of the month, when the sun moves in over there, pay attention, Gemini, to your dreams. Pay attention to visions. Pay attention to catching a quick blast of light out of the corner of your eye and you turn and it's not there. Pay attention to feathers that show up around you. Pay attention to the signs and the symbols that are speaking to you over this next four weeks because they are beckoning your attention because they have information for you. And that information may also be information that you have to share going forward because my experience is not always 
the most important conversations that you have, Gemini, are not always the ones that you have with the universe. They're the ones that the universe has had with you and now you're giving it to someone else. So pay attention to this dream, vision, intuitive life. Very much so, please and thank you. Okay, on the 25th, we're going to see Pluto up here in the energy of Capricorn taking a retrograde at 24 degrees. Now, Pluto is going to retrograde for the next five months, but this is during this retrograde. This is nothing new. You've been looking at it. You've been looking at this higher education. You've been looking at faith. You've been looking at beliefs. You've been looking at dreams. You've seen all of that with the Saturn energy that is now being reset. But also here in the eighth house, you've seen these things connected to other human beings in the eighth house. This is joint. This is intimate. This is your fears. This is your doubt. This is your worry about debt, right? Pluto is going to retrograde here now in a same old circumstance, show you where it can transform and evolve so that as Pluto comes out of that retrograde, you've done the work to do some cleanup. You've done the work to allow the review of what needs to transform there, what needs to die off. What steps do you need to take to clean up that debt, to clean up that karmic debt, to clean up that joint resource, to clean up that worry about putting your content out there and allow the evolution to come back to you. So as Pluto retrogrades, and don't worry, I'm gonna make a whole separate video on that so we can really get in there. This is your time. It's nothing new. You've been looking at it, and between these eighth and ninth houses, I really feel like Saturn's step forward and working on your belief structures is going to help you to launch this eighth house area out. It is also a brilliant and beautiful time with that Pluto retrograde for counseling therapy, counseling other people, helping. It is a time where we are going to face fear and we are going to face death, but we are going to face it in the eye of allowing transformation and evolution to come to the table. Now, as we end this month, we see Mercury leaving the energy. Where is Mercury run off to? We see Mercury leaving the energy of Aries and coming into the energy of Taurus, okay? So Mercury and Taurus, we're going to slow down communication just a little bit, right? Taurus is not a quick moving energy. It's an earth energy. So conversations you have here will be grounded. They will be practical. They will be built to make decisions which can sustain you for a long term. But Mercury also moves into a Venus ruled energy. So your voice could even be beautiful. The things you're talking about could be beautiful. The conversation you're having with other people, they're just kind of eating you up, right? They're like, oh my gosh, that's absolutely brilliant. And they feel your heart. They feel how this is coming from a sacred space or a place that maybe is information that's been accessed from in between the worlds. Of course. Of course, Mercury here in your 12th house is a beautiful energy for spiritual content. Produce it, write it, journal about it. What are you seeing? What is the vision that's coming to you? Are you working on something behind the scenes? Gemini, if you happen to be one of our scientists, you may be making breakthroughs or discoveries or finding information that's been right in front of you the entire time and you haven't seen it. And this would also apply if you're students as well. You're able to uh, dig up the information you need to be able to do the work that you need to do. So Gemini, I feel like this month is actually a month where you can stop, look around where you've been, and take some action steps forward. Aries season has led us right into this. So what is the one step you can take forward that is going to light something up, that's going to light you up, that's going to let you know that there is hope for things moving forward? What are you ready to share with us? What are you getting ready to share with us right before birthday time? This is your month to do that. So dive in, put yourself in here, enjoy the feels, enjoy the energy, and I can't wait to see what you produce and what we get to see from you from every industry and every stretch of the globe, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you grab your spring Equinox gifts. They are in the description box down below. When they're gone, they're gone. I love you guys, and I will see you next month. Bye.